So welcome back. And next up is Franco from MCF88. And they are a long time LoRaWAN product maker. And he's going to tell you all about their awesome devices. Enjoy his talk. Hello to everybody. Thanks for attending to this demo uh, about LoRaWAN and Modbus sensor in the industry. I'm Franco Dampicinini from Anginco and I'm from the R&D IoT department. This is the program of the demo. Uh, we start with the, the Modbus basics. Uh, we focus on the Modbus RTU settings, how to configure slaves, uh, how to read or write registers. Um, I show you some examples and how to connect uh, a Modbus sensor to TTN and uh, some tips and limitations of this uh, technology. Modbus is an uh, open, relative free protocol with uh, more than 40 years of life. It is a de facto standard, uh, it's very common mm. and uh, it allows the connection of a master and uh, several slaves. There are two versions, uh, one with the serial uh, interface, RS232 or RS485, and one uh, for Ethernet. The Modbus RQ uh, has one master and uh, several slaves. The Modbus TCP is based on the client server communication model. We focus on the Modbus RTU because it's the cheapest and the, the easiest to set up. It's a differential single line balance, half duplex, that means there is only one channel for the uh, transmission and for the receiving. Uh, there are at least uh, one slave. Uh, there are two logic levels, 0 and 1, um, and an additional uh, three state uh, level. Uh, the communication is very robust, it's not tolerant because it's differential, and uh, if well implemented, uh, it's very reliable. Uh, it's cheap to deploy. The cable is only a single pair of uh, twisted wires and a uh, ground wire. Uh, you can connect up to 32 devices on the same uh, daisy chain. Uh, since this is differential line, uh, to avoid uh, signal reflection, you have to use uh, two termination resistance uh, fitted at the beginning and the end of the main cable. Uh, if the data rate is low, of the cable is short, less than uh, some uh, tenth of, met of meters, uh, you can uh, avoid to use the termination resistance. My suggestion is uh, to use at least one termination resistance at the end of the, of the line. If the data rate is high or the cable is long, you have to use the termination resistance um, to avoid the data corruption. Uh, use a twisted pair cable because it's a differential, otherwise the benefit from a differential communication uh, is lost. Uh, better if the cable is shielded. Uh, if uh, you use a shielded cable, you have to hurt the shield only at one point, uh, one point at the end of the main cable. With termination resistor, you have to use also bias resistors. Uh, the Modbus uh, physical uh, layer has two levels, 0 and 1, but since it is a uh, half duplex, uh, there is also a um, high impedance uh, state uh, that normally uh, called the uh, three state level. If uh, the Modbus is in three state and uh, there aren't uh, any uh, polarization resistors, the voltage level uh, will be zero volt. For the, the Modbus, zero volt uh, is unknown. So uh, the receiver doesn't know if uh, the level is zero or one. As you can see in the picture, a value greater than 200 millivolts means one. Uh, voltage level less than uh, minus 200 millivolts means zero. Uh, if the uh, voltage level is in between these two values, uh, is unknown. So, 
uh, with the use of the bias resistor in three state condition there will always be a well known level on the input uh, on the market you can find uh, devices with uh, determination resistors already implemented could, could be uh, switchable and also uh, with the polarization resistors the polarization resistors must be fitted in one point of the line normally near the, the master the data format of the Modbus RTU uh, uh, each, uh, each uh, frame is uh, formed by 11 bits uh, so 1 start bit, 8 bits of data 1 for parity, 1 for stop the default is even parity Modbus RTU uh, needs uh, a device address that is a unique 8-bit uh, number that identifies the slave on the line the function code for reading and writing the number, the register number that identifies the register that master uh, wants to read or write the length of the register, the data and the checksum uh, Modbus defines several function code since the uh, Modbus registers are associated with a function and an offset within that function, uh, you will have to take into account uh, the function and the register. So, uh, different register has different uh, function. Mm, some manufacturers uh, use uh, an absolute addressing. Uh, already related to the function, but the uh, standard uh, addressing is uh, uh, relative. So uh, you need the function and the offset of that function to access to the register. There are four types of uh, registers. The coil, coils are one bit register for uh, outputs and can be read and write. Uh, discrete uh, inputs are one bit register for input only re readable. The input register are 16 bit uh, register for input only readable. And holding register that are the most universal uh, 16 bit register can be read and write, can be used for input outputs, configuration data, and any requirement for holding data. This is an example of a configuration table. Uh, where you, you can find the label of the register with a mnemonic label, the address of the slave, the function associated with that uh, with the command, the relative address, the length of the register, uh, in this case for bytes, the baud rate on the physical line, and the parity in this case is known. Here another slave with a different address same function three that means reading the relative address the length of the register that you are reading and uh, a different baud rate a different parity in this case is even you can also write uh, with function six or sixteen six uh, means uh, write on single register uh, sixteen means uh, write on multiple uh, registers so uh, here you can see that the data is different uh, uh, has a different length between the single register and the multiple registers uh, here are some example of uh, registers table uh, in this case we have an absolute register uh, here we have a relative uh, register depend on the, on the manufacturer it is not always uh, Declare it if uh, the registers are uh, relative or absolute, so you have to pay attention to, to this uh, information when you uh, configure the Modbus Master. Uh, here are some examples of sensor uh, energy meters, uh, three phase uh, energy meter, um, four channel output uh, analog output, uh, eight uh, analog input channel. Eight uh, thermocouples uh, input and uh, sixteen uh, output. Uh, 
Uh, so there are a lot of uh, different sensors on the market because Modbus is a very uh, common uh, protocol and uh, with a lot of uh, uh, advantages. So um, you have to, to choose the right sensor for your application, uh, but it's quite easy to find on the market the sensor that you need. This is the power of the Modbus. Uh, the flexibility uh, because uh, uh, you can have the data in the way you prefer depending on the master that you use. In this case, uh, we will use a LoRaWAN master to read data from the field. Uh, the application are, uh, I, can, I can say, unlimited because uh, <laughs> since there are many masters, there are many applications, many, sorry, many Slaves, uh, there are many applications. So, for the uh, water quality in the pools, uh, for the concrete temperature, for the uh, level measurement, uh, for the poultry, for uh, the big uh, industry, so for the energy monitoring, for gas metering. Here, uh, an example uh, using a thermocouples to Modbus sensor and uh, a Modbus to LoRaWAN uh, interface. Uh, the data Excel devices can read up to four thermocouples. Uh, the MCF38 uh, interface is a Class C Modbus R2 master. Uh, can read and write on time or on downlinks, and uh, it can read up to 512 bytes for every reading. We use uh, two probes. Uh, 2K types thermocodes connected uh, to TTN. The first uh, step is to configure the physical layer of the Modbus RTU using the right baud rate, the right parity, the sending interval. Uh, this is our uh, uh, tool to configure the sensor. Uh, here are the graphs of the K type thermocouple. Uh, you can see that the that Excel device can read the, the K type. Uh, the device uses uh, an absolute uh, uh, addressing, so we have to take an account of the offset when we configure the master. And here are the data on the console of the TTN. Uh, it's not uh, easy to have uh, the code for uh, Modbus data, since uh, it depends on the configuration that you write on the master. Uh, you have to know the register number, the length, uh, so uh, it's uh, easier to decode the data on the uh, application side. Uh, you have to know the configuration of the master to decode the uh, data in the right way. For example, this is the uplink from uh, our uh, master. Uh, there are three bytes of, uh, four bytes of uh, uh, configuration that are specific uh, from the sensor, the payload type, report ID, the frame number, the data length, and here the six register that we had from the slave. So the configuration type, four key type uh, probes, the conjunction temperatures, and the four channels, two populated and two unconnected. Uh, you have uh, to take into account uh, the limitation of the radio transmission. So, for example, in the EU band where you have a, a duty cycle limit of 1%, uh, in this example you can receive from 1 to 30 kilobytes, depending on the speed factor, for every hour. You uh, must uh, calculate the data amount related to the timing uh, of the reading uh, to be sure to are able to receive all the data that you read from the slaves. Uh, it's not easy to, to calculate because uh, 
depend on the speed factor, um, depend on the band that you are using, but uh, is essential to do uh, to avoid the loss of data. Here are some tips uh, on Modbus, uh, tips from my experience in the industrial uh, field. Uh, Modbus is very robust, uh, is reliable, is easy to implement, but it needs some attention uh, to give it the best, uh, otherwise it could be a nightmare. Uh, first of all, use a twisted pair cable. Is a differential communication bus, so the twisted cable is uh, uh, is uh, mandatory to achieve the best uh, the best uh, uh, immunity on the field. Uh, check the polarity of the wires. You have the 50% of uh, probability to uh, connect in the wrong uh, way. <laughs> the 50% uh, uh, plus one, usually, and different manufacturers use different names for the for the wires. The A, B, D plus, D minus. Uh, always place at least one termination resistor. Uh, better two, depending on the baud rate, on the length, but uh, at least one termination resistor at the end of the bus, and don't leave the termination resistor or resistors without polarization. Otherwise, uh, it will be a mess because uh, only termination resistors uh, make uh, the communication very uh, unstable because in, when the communication is in the uh, three state uh, uh, situation, the, the data is unknown. Avoid the stubs, so you have to, have a, a, you have to connect. Uh, the devices as a daisy chain bus without stub. Use a twisted pair cable, I already said. Okay, uh, please use twisted pair cable. Double check the addressing of the registers. Uh, standard absolute offset base one, offset base two. Uh, these are the, the main trouble that you can uh, meet during the uh, the use of Modbus Master because uh, most of them uh, makes the bus running, but not always. So you, if you have a, a bus that sometimes run, sometimes doesn't run, is the worst situation. So uh, please remember this point. Uh, the rest is only software. Uh, please note MCF88 now is Nginco. Uh, this year uh, Nginco acquired RFTech from the vending market and MCF88 from the lower market to give the best service for the customer, same people, same product, uh, nothing changed from your side. So the, don't care if you receive a sensor that from Nginco, they are still MCF88 sensors. Thank you for uh, attention. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Uh, sorry for my English. If you need more information, write me or meet me at the booth or write me an email to, to reserve uh, a meeting to the, the next uh, hour, next days, and uh, thanks again, uh, see you.